Hiya there, my name is Gemma Jennison and I work as part of the Community Vision Team. We're an infrastructure support service to the voluntary and community sector. As part of the team, I have two main roles, which is VCSE, Safeguarding Development Officer, Voluntary Community Social Enterprise and Faith, and Lead Representative, Domestic Abuse Support Officer. Essentially, my two roles mean that I provide both safeguarding and domestic abuse training and support to our voluntary community sector. Today, I'm going to be delivering a short webinar on safeguarding adult reviews and the voluntary community faith and social enterprise sector. I will be looking at some of the key findings and some of the safeguarding adults board reviews um, into safeguarding adult reviews, some of the findings that they found and how we can apply it to practice in voluntary and community sector settings. I will now share my screen with you for the remainder of the session. Safeguarding Adult Reviews and the Voluntary Community Faith and Social Enterprise VCFSE Sector, what can we learn? First of all, I will just go through some brief um, welcome and housekeeping. Firstly, a huge welcome to the session. In terms of the webinar, we will be, we'll be roughly around an hour in length and it will be fully recorded with my details at the very end for anybody who wishes to get in touch in order for any further safeguarding, training support, or if you have any queries or require any information from the session. First of all, I'd also like to, to make a note that everybody to take care of themselves during the session. We will be discussing some content that may, that, some content, sorry, that may come up with a trigger warning for some people. So please take care of yourselves and do reach out if you require any further support following watching the session. So we've got four main objectives of the session. First of all, we're going to look at what exactly safeguarding adult boards are which will be referred to as SABs, and their role in safeguarding adults with care and support needs. Secondly, we'll do an exploration of what a safeguarding adult review is and what is its purpose. Thirdly, we're gonna look at eight key findings from some of the recent local and national safeguarding adult review analysis, and what these things might teach us when working with adults at risk of abuse and neglect. And finally, we're going to look at a quick overview of safeguarding support services in the East Riding, including lo local support, which is offered to the voluntary community, faith and social enterprise sector. Please bear in mind that if you're watching from another local authority, your local safeguarding services may have different, slightly different names and contact details. What I would do is recommend that you simply Google your local board um, in order to get the contact details for your specific one. Safeguarding adult boards. So the Care Act 2014 established safeguarding adult boards or SABs in law. The remit of safeguarding adult boards is generally local authority wide for each board, although with some areas and across some regions nationally. Some SABs cover more than one local authority area, usually in areas covered by adjacent councils, and some others combine with Safeguarding Children Partnership. In some areas, there are combined Safeguarding Adult Boards, Children's Partnership Boards and Community Safety Partnership. There are 136 Safeguarding Adult Boards across England, and our local one is the East Riding Safeguarding Adults Board, which can be accessed on the website there. So what exactly is a safeguarding adult review? So under the Care Act 2014, sections 44.1, 2 and 3, safeguarding adult boards must carry out a safeguarding adult review when an adult with care and support needs has died or suffered serious harm and it is suspected or known that the case, the cause was neglect or abuse, including that of self-neglect. And there is a concern that agencies could have potentially worked better to sue to, to protect the adult. The Safeguarding Adult Board may also, under section 44.4, 4, 
undertake a safeguarding adult review in other cases concerning adults with care and support needs. The purpose is to identify what can be led to drive forward change in order to prevent harm from occurring in future similar circumstances. A serious adult review is a statutory requirement for safeguarding adult boards, SABs, and safeguarding adult practice can be improved by identifying what is helping and what is hindering safeguarding work in order to tackle barriers to good practice and protect adults from harm. Quite often the case is not to call out sort of poor practice or, or where things potentially went wrong, but to learn how they may be dealt with differently in the future to prevent any issues from reoccurring. Safeguarding adult result reviews need to be of good quality and, an, and need to be able to be shared to maximise the value of learning. For example, today we are sharing this with you, you with yourselves so that you can hopefully use this information to inform future practice in your settings. So some of the data which has been used to inform this workshop includes a national analysis of quantitative serious adult reviews data which was taken from around 652 reviews. We've also incorporated the East Riding Collaborative Report from 2023 and the AirSAB, which is the East Riding Safeguarding Adults Board, second national SARS summary. It, finally, the East Riding research that we will use as part of this workshop reflects the abuse and neglect of around 1,075 individuals. Finding number one, gender and serious adult reviews data. So nationally and regionally, the analysis shows that more females, sorry, more males than females are included in serious adult reviews. And the division was that was even greater across the Yorkshire and the Humber region. So as you can see there, we've got a 58%, which was concerned with males, 34%, which was females, and an 8% there, which whether the gender was not um, specified. So what does this tell us? It's important that we recognise that although statistically females are more likely to be the victims of abuse and harm when we consider things such as violence against women and girls. However, ser serious adult reviews research shows us that men are at a higher risk of abuse and support when we are considering adults with care and support needs. Therefore, we need to ensure that we are considering this when engaging, working with and supporting males who access our support and services in our settings. We need to also ensure that our staff and volunteers have a training in being able to identify potential signs of abuse and harm and that these appropriate conversations are taking place. Are we asking men and women or are we stereotypically assuming that women may be more likely to be at risk of abuse and harm? It's therefore important that we are equally accessing or equally engaging with and asking all genders to ensure that we are accounting for both the females and males who are all at risk of potential abuse and neglect. Finding number two is age data. So in the Yorkshire and Humber analysis, it showed a higher prevalence of young adults that were included in SARS national, more SARS than we see nationally. Conversely, the Yorkshire and the Humber analysis also showed a lower prevalence of adults in the 81 and above age group. So what does this mean? Firstly, it is important that we recognise that young adults are aged between 18 and 24, and especially those with care and support needs, may be potentially at more risk of abuse and harm than in comparison to other age brackets. This in itself may come as a surprise to some people because we would generally sometimes associate higher risk with potentially um, older generations with maybe potentially more care and support needs. In our voluntary community faith and social enterprise settings, we must ensure that our staff, paid and unpaid, are adequately trained to identify those signs and symptoms, particularly those in relation to self-neglect, and that they can appropriately respond to these. 
And it's being able to look beyond the more obvious signs and symptoms of abuse to really be able to ask the great and appropriate questions to get to the maybe the less obvious, more complex and more subtle signs and symptoms, unfortunately, that we do see in those we work with. We must also ensure that provisions are available and accessible for this cohort of young adults. Finding number three, care leavers and serious adult reviews. Regionally, the number of SARS involving care leavers was also significantly higher than the national average. The national average is usually around 9%. However, regionally in the Yorkshire and the Humber, this was 25%. What does this mean? Given the increase in high numbers of care leavers being the subject of a serious adult review, we need to understand what potential vulnerability factors place them at greater risk. Considering what you understand about those um, um, young people who potentially have spent time in um, local authority care, can you consider what some of these vulnerabilities might be? Some that we do see is things such as instability and insecurity, the potential history of trauma and any other forms of abuse. We also see that those care leavers are more at risk of experiencing loss and grief and isolation, potentially because they're not connected in any way with any biological roots or family. That lack of control that they have over their circumstances and also there's links between care leavers and increased financial hardship. In addition, we need to ensure that there are adequate services and resources which raise awareness of safeguarding issues affecting young people and that there are services out there to respond to these. Are you sharing local services with your members? It's equally important that we raise awareness of all services out there and that we jointly come together to tackle um, abuse and neglect. Finding number four, vulnerability and SARS. Nationally and regionally, chronic physical health and mental ill health were the most prevalent vulnerabilities in the series Adult Reviews Explored. We've got a number of examples there. You can see chronic physical health is around in the Yorkshire and the Humber around 36 and nationally 411. We've also got, again, equally mental ill health also scoring 36. And next to that, we have substance misuse, memory and cognition and impaired mobility. So what does this tell us? Vulnerabilities linked to serious physical conditions may also be linked with a number of may also be concerned with a number of other factors, such things as mobility and the ability to get around and access and engage in support, reliance on medication, and also that social isolation element. Vulnerabilities associated with men mental illness may may also increase isolation, so social integration, and the likelihood of engaging with support services. Communities need to be aware that those with poor physical and mental health may be at more at risk of being a victim of abuse and of self neglect, of, and neglect, including self neglect. Finding number five, perpetrators of harm. The most prevalent perpetrator from the research analysis was recorded as self, which reflects the high number of cases that we see of self-neglect. You can see there that self is reported in 36% of cases across the Yorkshire and Humber and nationally around 40%. Next up is the partner, relative, friend or carer. And nationally, that is 13%. So what does this mean? This finding suggests that many adults who have care and support needs are potentially more at risk from harm and self-neglect. As this harm is not being inflicted by another, this may also mean that we are less likely to identify it. We may often struggle to manage or tackle or challenge issues where we see cases of self-neglect simply because we don't want to upset someone by questioning their choices and way of living. 
The individual's ability to care for themselves may be compromised by their care and support needs. And there are many factors that may contribute to why um, issues such as having a physical difficulty or mental ill health difficulty um, might, we might see these greater um, figures in terms of self-neglect. Some of these additional issues might include isolation, potentially a lack of support from community um, around them, mental health needs, isolation, and furthermore, they may not wish to access or ask for support and may struggle in, in order to, um, they may also struggle in order to reaching out to others and requesting some support. Finding number six, the different types of abuse. The findings show us that the most prevalent form of abuse was self-neglect, closely followed by neglect from another, such as a formal or informal carer. Following this was domestic abuse, physical abuse, and financial and material abuse. What does this tell us? Adults with care and support needs are at an increased risk of self-neglect and or neglect from another. This may be perpetrated by a paid or unpaid carer. Staff, paid and unpaid, need to be aware of the signs of neglect and the, both the obvious ones, but also the more hidden ones. In cases where potential neglect is identified, VCFSC staff, paid and unpaid, need to recognise the potential signs also of domestic abuse, financial and material abuse. Finding number seven, living arrangements. Nationally and regionally, living alone was the most prevalent living arrangement for those included in the SARS. Other living arrangements were lower than the national figures with the exception of living with a parent, which was 25% higher than the national figure. What can we learn? VCFSE staff need to recognise that those living alone are potentially more at risk of abuse and harm, including self-neglect. This finding is likely to have links with the increase in statistics of self-neglect when we consider a person that is potentially really struggling, living independently on their own. And if you take into aspect elements such as mental Ill health, physical health and their ability to access engaging services, it is therefore more understandable where these may be linked with um, situations and experiences of self-neglect. And finally, finding number eight, the source of the referral. The source was frequently not recorded. However, most common referrals were received from local authority teams, the police and health services. Zero percent of referrals came from the voluntary and community setting, settings. And uh, we, I sort of, we sort of welcome you to take a minute to consider why this might be. And why this particular, you know, why as voluntary community settings were potentially not referring cases in um, concerning adults experiencing abuse and neglect. Others included coroners, integrated partnership trusts, the Crown Prosecution Service and family members. So finally, what does this learn us? VCFSE staff and leaders need to ensure that all staff, paid and unpaid, have the skills, knowledge and training to identify adults at potential risk or already experiencing harm and the services and referral pathways that we may need to access to support the individual and or the family. It is important that staff have that skills, knowledge and training in order to highlight and pick up on potentially quite complex cases and less obvious um, signs and symptoms of abuse and create that space for um, having a conversation with individuals to find out what's really going on for them. Equally, we need to increase the confidence in staff in order to access services, make referrals to the necessary services and engage with other agencies so we can provide that multi-agency response to tackling abuse and neglect within our communities. We're just going to have a little look at some of the safeguarding support locally. So first of all, our East Riding Adult Safeguard, uh, Safeguarding Adults team can be accessed via the telephone number there, 01482 396940. 
Secondly, we have our East Riding Safeguarding Children's, which is comprised of two main teams, the Early Help Hub, for all issues that are non-urgent, but where a child or family may require some support and intervention from services. And just underneath that, we have the Safeguarding Hub, where anything that is requires the immediate attention of services. So if you are concerned about a child that is at immediate risk of harm, um, you must re refer that directly into the Safeguarding Hub by 01482 if you are supporting anyone and you are concerned about them being a victim of domestic abuse, e either themselves or as a child as part of a family, you can access our local team, which is the Domestic Violence and Abuse Partnership. They have three services within them. One is the victim service in which they provide support to any victim of abuse over the age of 16 years. They have a children's service which support um, which provides support to children and young people where they've potentially been a witness to domestic abuse. And equally, if they are a young victim, so we're talking teenage age, if they're a young victim um, and they're experiencing abuse in their own relationship. And finally, they have the Prevention of Domestic Abuse Service, which is the perpetrator um, a program where those that wish to address their abusive behaviours can refer in for their own support. Any of those three services can be accessed by the telephone number there, 01482 396368. In terms of safeguarding support to the voluntary community, faith and social enterprise, Community Vision are um, commissioned by East Riding of Yorkshire Council to provide that training and support to the whole of the sector. We have anything on our website from a range of policy toolkits where the policy safeguarding policies and procedures can be downloaded directly, but also we can come in and provide that bespoke tailored safeguarding support to groups. And all we ask is that I will give you my details in a minute that you pop me across an email and I will pick that up with you and we will discuss your safeguarding support needs. Finally, we have a database of voluntary community, faith, social enterprise and partnership wide services, both locally and nationally. And that is our local links website, which you can see at the bottom there. It is a database of a whole range of services from those designed um, with a safeguarding focus, right much broader in terms of social and voluntary and community. So we please welcome you to check out that database and equally if you have a group or an organisation that you feel needs adding yourself, um, that you contact us or you go through the necessary steps to get yourselves registered on our database. That is a huge thank you for me and for any questions, queries or requests for support and training, please contact myself at gemma.jennison at communityvision.org.uk. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful and please send any feedback or comments across on the email address listed there. Thank you ever so much.